Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, Alone on the launch pad, the Saturn V rocket awaited its passengers. Once en route, there would be no turning back. The command module sat atop the 363-foot, 7.6 million pound thrust vehicle. As daybreak approached, three men somberly prepared for launch. Neil Armstrong, Commander, Apollo 11. Edwin Buzz Aldrin, Lunar Module Pilot. Michael Collins, Command Module Pilot. After a decade of planning and hard work, we're willing and ready to attempt to achieve our national goal. This is possible because very many Americans across the nation have dedicated themselves to quality craftsmanship and ingenuity. We're dependent, too, on the successes of the previous flights, the unmanned flights and the manned flights, Apollos 7, 8, 9, and 10, whose crews have done a magnificent job of preparing the way for us. I'm sure this American ingenuity and American craftsmanship has given us the best equipment that can be made available. And we're very happy to be ready to fly. Mr. Armstrong, there has been some concern in the past about Apollo crews becoming too fatigued by intense training in the final weeks before launch. How do you uh, feel at this point in time? Well, it's certainly uh, very hard preparation time and getting ready for flight and, uh, and we have been uh, working hard ever since our assignment to this uh, Apollo 11. However, uh, our pace has, has certainly not been unreasonable and, uh, and we think that uh, we're certainly not unduly fatigued and we're ready to fly. Would uh, maybe sum up my feelings and, and a word of uh, anticipation. This is what, to me, uh, characterizes uh, my feelings right now as I look forward to the next uh, few days. It seemed to me at that time I was uh, most interested in just getting that thing off. Above all, I did not want to recycle, to have to empty out those gigantic uh, fuel tanks and, uh, and try again a different day. I just desperately wanted to go on the, uh, on the 16th of July. Right on time as far as the astronaut countdown is concerned, the prime crew now departing from their crew quarters here at the Kennedy Space Center. Astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and then finally Mike Collins, plus their suit technicians and director of flight crew operations, Deke Slayton, now boarding the transfer van for the trip to the launch pad. Well, every launch uh, day is uh, a time of uh, excitement, enthusiasm, and apprehension. But I think uh, in most circumstances, uh, you always feel that the chances of actually lifting off are, <laughs> are fairly distant or remote. And uh, you have to temper your enthusiasm with the realization that, uh, in fact, you may be coming back in and trying to go another day. The most memorable thing that I can recall about that particular day was the opportunity while my, uh, my two friends here were being put into the spacecraft to uh, stand alone by myself uh, out there and, and look at the rocket and the quietness and see the sun come up and the waves rolling in and the evidence of the millions of people uh, watching, but, but nothing specific and just so quiet. And to realize that, indeed, uh, such a contrast was going to take place, all the frantic activity preparing the rocket, but it was so quiet up there for me personally, and that in a very few moments uh, we were going to be uh, departing in a 
and a great roar and offer a momentous uh, event. Apollo 11 was about exploration, about taking risks for great rewards in science and engineering, about setting an ambitious goal before the world, and then finding the political will and the national means to achieve it, indelibly impress, impressed upon our nation's memory, the voyage of Apollo still seem incredible. We are inspired by the magnitude and teeming efforts of people from all walks of life, from industries big and small, who worked in tandem to attain a long-term goal of magnificent achievement.